stood before creation. Eternity in your hands. You spoke the earth into motion. My soul now to stay. stood before my failure and carried the cross for my shame. My sin weighed upon your shoulders, my soul now to stand. So what could I say? surrender to you, Lord, 
the King of kings, the Lord of lords. God Hey, Freedom family and friends, this is Pastor Larry. It is Tuesday, May the 25th. I hope and trust that you had an awesome weekend celebrating the goodness and the greatness of our God with other believers. At church, maybe you joined us, maybe you were in fellowship with your own church, and I do hope that you have a church home. So thanks for joining me today. We are going to continue studying through the book of Romans. So while I go through the introduction here, why don't you go ahead and find Romans chapter 11, all right? Romans chapter 11, go ahead and do that. And I want to remind you that you have time to hit the like button, hit the share button, and comment. That's right. What a joy it is to share this and um, what a privilege it is, an opportunity you have to share the Word of God with others in such a unique way, a fast way um, to a broad audience, and you can get it out quick in one click. And so why don't you go ahead and copy and paste that link uh, right to your Facebook account and um, and share and invite others to join with you. And so while you're doing that, don't forget you can always comment on prayer. Uh, maybe there's something you want us to pray about. Many of you have been doing that. And I so value and appreciate that. And I want you to know we are praying specifically for you that have allowed us to know what's going on in your life. And again, it doesn't have to be very descriptive um, or if it's private and you don't want that to be made public, you can private message us on Facebook and we will be sure to keep that just like that. But the point is, um, we want to pray for you. Even this morning, I had the privilege of speaking with someone on the phone and praying with them um, while they have something heavy on their heart today. And uh, so something in their life, uh, they're really needing a breakthrough on and uh, God to work uh, again in a miraculous way. And and so I did that. And I'm very thankful. The text came to me uh, last night. But what a joy and a privilege it is to know that we have others praying for us. But I'm glad that you're here. Hope that you've got uh, your Bible with you. Hope maybe you grabbed a cup of coffee, some tea, water, whatever you have. Many of you uh, are at work. I get that. I so respect that. Thanks for taking a little bit out of your time, your break, which you probably really need and are valuing and uh, don't have a lot of time, especially to look up verses and all that. So I'll do my best to um, keep you informed and Keep you abreast of what verses we're on and try to go a little bit slow and not speedily through uh, all of this where you miss something. But many of you are going to catch this on replay, and uh, I am so thankful and grateful for your diligence in coming back and joining us on replay. So we're glad that you're here. Uh, Romans chapter 11. Hope that you have your Bible. Grab a sip of whatever you got. Mm, I enjoy coffee and I enjoy spending time in God's word with you in a hope that you see the value and uh, the opportunity that you have to grow and invest in yourself spiritually as well as others as you like and share this. Romans chapter 11, uh, we're in verses really 17 through 24. And we're going to get through this and we're going to move on to something new in the chapter or really a continuation, but kind of a break there uh, uh, as Paul kind of explains to us what's happening. Paul is giving the illustration and metaphors of the root, the branch of an olive tree. And in verse 17 through 22, I hope that you have found that in Romans chapter 11. I'd like to read through that again so you can stay on context and understand where we're going. And we'll pick up where we left off on Thursday of last week. And so if you ever miss any of these, you can go back on the Facebook, look through all the threads, but you can specifically find them by the date 
and by the day, either on Tuesday and Thursdays, that's the day that we uh, have this Bible study, um, and the date. So you can do that, and they are in order, and so hopefully that helps you. Look at Romans chapter 11, and look at verse 17. And if some of the branches, that is unbelieving Israel, be broken off, and thou... Gentile nation, being a wild olive tree, wert grafted in among them, and with the partakest, and with them partakest of the root and fatness of the olive tree. But Paul is given the illustration of who's been cut off. Remember, it's just temporary. Israel's been cut off. They have been set aside. It's not been permanent, only temporary. God put their program on Paul's and revealed something new here. And the benefit of that is us Gentiles now have been engrafted in. But then the warning comes in verse 18, boast not against the branches, boast not against their fall or against them being cut off. In other words, don't be anti-Semitic. All right. Many are today, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. But here's the warning to us, church, to us believers. Verse 18, but if thou boast, thou Gentile, right, bearest not the root, but the root thee. Remember, we are blessed through their fall, but also through their rise. Uh, their their rise hasn't happened, but because of their fall, we have been blessed. And so we don't boast on that because that is the grace of God. And yes, while God is delivering something new today called the age of grace, the grace of God, we don't boast as if we have done something. No, we haven't done anything except a uh, really separate ourselves from because of our sin. So verse 19, thou wilt say then the branches are broken off that I might be grafted in. That's true. Well, because of unbelief, Israel, they were broken off and thou Gentile, check this out, standest by faith. We know that to be true, don't we? We stand by faith. We stand in faith. Stand Paul said, stand there with in the liberty where Christ has made us free. So by grace are you saved. That's true. We are saved through faith, right? And the fact is, how do we live? We live by faith. So the way that you were saved through faith is the way that you live the Christian life through faith. So we stand on this. We stand on our faith in Christ. Paul says, and there's the continuing of the warning, verse 20, but be not high-minded, but fear. We'll talk about that and break that down a little bit more of what that means of be not high-minded and boastful and prideful. Verse 21, for if God spared not the natural branches, Israel, right? He didn't spare them of his judgment and wrath. Paul says, take heed, so listen to the warning and look out, lest he also spare not thee. So the fact is, you know, it would be easy that we could live in wrath and not in grace. Um, we aren't deserving, we are undeserving, but Christ in his mercy and his grace gave us what we didn't deserve. You know, I think that really descri describes grace and mercy. It's not giving us what we do deserve. It's giving us what we don't deserve. And so we do cry for mercy. We do thank God for his grace. Look at verse 22. Behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of God on them which fell. There was good and severity. God was serious about obeying him. God's serious about us today, obeying him and living according to his word. Paul said in verse 22, severity. God takes this very seriously, but, but towards the goodness. So we look back and see the severity of what happened to Israel but then we look at ourselves and see the goodness, and one could walk away from that thinking, 
Wow. Look how good we must have been and we are to God. No. Any good that is in us is Jesus Christ. You would agree with that, wouldn't you? There's a song out, If There's Any Good in Me, um, It Is Christ. I believe Michael English sings that song. Uh, But the fact is, there's nothing good in me except Christ. So we don't come away from this with boasting and pridefulness. We come away with from this with humbleness and humility. So verse 22, if thou continue in his goodness, yes, stay in his goodness, obey him, follow him, serve him, love him. Otherwise thou shalt also or also shalt be cut off. We don't want that. We should learn, right? All scripture is written for our admonition. We can look back through the scriptures because we have the completed word of God. They didn't in their day. We can look back and see this now. Is that a reason to boast? No, it's a good reason for us to take it into account and live accordingly and learn learn by the examples of others. Verse 23, and they, Israel also, if they abide not still in unbelief, if they choose to continue to reject God and choose not to follow him and obey him and turn their lives over to him, shall be grafted in, for God is able to graft them in again. There is still hope. There's still time in this moment for every person to come unto God through Jesus Christ, if you believe. But if you still live in your unbelief, the moment that Christ, okay, raptures the church, we'll talk about that, the fact is then the grace period ends. That means there's not the opportunity anymore. And God will pick up where he left off in the prophetic program when it comes to Israel. Verse 24, for if thou wert cut off or out of the olive tree, excuse me, which is wild by nature, he's talking to the Gentile here, and wert grafted contrary to nature into a good olive tree, we sure were. How much more shall these, Israel, be the natural branches? This is where it started. Be grafted into their own olive tree. Here is what Paul is reminding them. God is going to be true to his promises to them. And God hasn't forgotten his covenant with them. His covenant with Israel. And by the way, that is not your covenant. You have a new covenant. And that is not your New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. That's not that. That new covenant only begins through the death of a testator. Jesus Christ died, was buried, and risen again. I'm so thankful that the story didn't end at the cross. It only began there. So there is where our new covenant comes in. So Paul was letting us know, he is referring and letting us know that God is dealing with individuals today But here in this text, he is talking about them as a nation. So here's what we look from when we talk about the root or when Paul is talking about the root and the branches of the olive tree. You know, it brings us to this thought, and this is where we left off last week on Thursday. We talked about the rapture of the church, the body of Christ, and often it's not considered as it should be because the rapture is the end of the grace period and the picking back up or unpausing the button that God hit for the prophetic program for the nation of Israel. Grace will be over and God will pick up back where he left off, where he was to bring wrath unto all those who have rejected him. 
and that Jesus would set up his literal, literal, visible and physical kingdom that had been promised to the nation of Israel. So we think about our rapture and Paul said this when he said this in Titus 2, and I want you to listen to these verses that come out of Titus 2, 11 through 13. Check this out and listen to this if you don't have time to look it up. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. That's right. Jesus Christ came to this earth born of a virgin lived a sinless life, gave his life as a ransom for all, and thus issued and offered grace to all. And that is still continuing today from the cross to this moment. Today he's offering grace. Titus 2 verse 12 says, teaching us, that denying ungodliness and worldly desires, we should live soberly in our right mind, thinking clearly, living righteously and in godliness in this present world. How does God want us to live? Let's repeat it. He wants us to live uh, without worldly desires. He wants us to live with godliness, denying ungodliness, living with our right mind, thinking clearly on the truth, living righteously, right? Those who have the righteousness of God, righteousness means doing what is right, living right, and in godliness, we should live in holiness and godliness in this present world. And here's verse 13 of Titus 2. As we await, how should we live? We live in the things described in verse 12, waiting as we wait for the blessed hope. Who is that? That's Jesus Christ. What is this a reference to? The rapture. We're in the grace period, but we're waiting for that blessed hope. See, Jesus is is going to appear in the heavens. Now, he says in verse 13, and the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, the appearing, right? The appearing. So when we talk about this and what Paul is referring to, it should for us who are have been engrafted in. The Gentiles, we have been saved through faith, right? Through the finished and completed work of the cross. We think about this, that we are the branches, and when the grace period ends, we're going to be broken off. We're going to be raptured up, broken off, and Israel is going to be grafted in again. That's what Paul said in Romans chapter 11 from the verses that we just read. So think about this. What does that mean? God is going to pick back up on the prophetic program that he put on Paul's for the nation of Israel. As we are taken up out of this world and believers who profess the Lord to love the Lord, we should be carefully considering the fact that Our rapture, which we are all looking forward to and we're thankful, awaiting that blessed hope. We rejoice in that. We sing about songs of heaven. Those are wonderful. And we get happy in Jesus on our Sunday services. But it also is a sobering reminder. The age of grace will end, folks. So it is a reminder of urgency, isn't it? That Our fellow men and women need the gospel, the grace of God. And when we think about the rapture, let me give you another thought. It will be at that day, the rapture, that all the members of the body, us, okay, those who have put their faith and trust in Jesus, right, through the cross work of Christ in this age in which we live in, dead and alive, even those who have died in Christ already, right? And we think about that. The Bible says we're going to be called up 
for a meeting with the Lord in the air. Now, here's the thing. Check this out. While the end of the age of grace happens at the rapture, I want you to know that we also need to be thinking about when that happens. Yes, are we doing our best to reach those that are without Christ? But are we also living in a manner that we think of rewards or loss? There will be some who will receive rewards, and there will be some that suffer loss for their conduct and their service of Christ. I want to read you several verses on this thought. Now think about this. While we look forward to our rapture and the glorious appearing of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, it should be also compelling us how we are living on this earth. Now think about this. Let me read you several verses you may want to write them down. The references will probably be in the comments. But here's the first verse, 1 Corinthians 3, 9 through 15. I want you to listen to these verses. This is 1 Corinthians 3, 9 through 15. And I want to just kind of park it on these verses for a moment when we think of us being raptured out and how we look forward to that day. But may it be a reminder of what actually happens as well. It means the age of grace will end, but it also means that there'll be a time of rewards or suffering loss. 1 Corinthians 3 verse 9 says, For we are laborers together with God. You are God's vineyard. You are God's building. Yes, that's right. God uses people to spread his word today. God uses people. They have always been people, his instrument in which to get his word out. Verse 10, according to the grace of God, which has been given to me, Paul says, as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, but another builds upon it. Now let each other take heed how he builds on it. What does that mean? We are working together. Believers working together for the commonality of reaching the world for Jesus Christ. You may give the gospel, but I may come along and actually lead that person to Christ later on in life. I may sow the seed of the gospel in someone's life, but then you may come along through prayer or giving them more scriptures, lead that person to Christ or invest in them spiritually. So we are all collectively working together, or at least we should be, to reach as many people as we can for Christ. Verse 11, for no one can lay another foundation than than which was laid, which is Jesus Christ. That is so true. What is is it of us to boast on anything? The, The foundation is not come and see how great our church looks or how great our band sounds. And those things are good. And I hope that you have those. I hope that you're pleased with your property and how it looks and all those things, those are wonderful. But in light of eternity, all that matters will be how many souls have you led to Christ? Now, verse 12 says, now, if anyone builds on this foundation, check this out. With gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, or stubble, each one's work will be revealed for the day will declare it because it will be revealed by fire and the fire will test what sort of work each has done. Now, this doesn't happen immediately at the rapture, but we'll all stand before the judgment seat. We'll all stand before God and we will give an account of our life with Christ. Wow, how have we lived our life unto Christ? Paul said, if anyone's work, which he has built on the foundation, endures, he will receive a reward. That's 1 Corinthians 3, verse 14. Chapter 3, verse 14. But then listen to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 15. If anyone's work is burned, he will suffer loss. Rewards suffer loss. 
but he himself will be saved, still going through the fire. What is he saying? Yes, if you have trusted Christ as your Lord and Savior, you will not be judged for your sin. Hallelujah. Your sins have been forgiven. You stand free and redeemed in Christ. However, what you have done with your life under Christ does matter. And it matters as far as rewards or suffer loss. It matters. And I think of this way, and there are songs written about this, like a song I remember. I don't know how to sing it, um, but I remember it. Must I go an empty handed? It's an old song. You ought to look it up. Must I go an empty handed? In other words, shall I go to heaven with just me? Am I only living in self-preservation mode? Am I only thinking of myself, self-gratification? Am I even concerned about the eternity state of others? Will I go to heaven with just me? No, there will be many there in heaven, but will any be in heaven as an account of you? Will any be in heaven because you sowed or watered or built upon the foundation that was laid, which is Jesus Christ. What have you done with Christ? This precious gift that you and I have been given. Remember, it matters. Now, 2 Corinthians 5, verse 10. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 10 for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Yes, we will all stand before Christ, that each one may receive his recompense in the body according to what he has done, whether it was good or bad. That's 2 Corinthians 5.10. Did you hear that? Whether it be good or bad, we will stand and give an account for that. Reward system or suffer loss. First Thessalonians 4, 17. Then we who are alive and remain shall be called up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we forever be. We shall be forever with the Lord. Folks, when the rapture happens, the age of grace is over. And we will stand before God and give an account for our life, how we lived it under Christ or how we squandered our life with Christ. 1 Corinthians 4, 5. Therefore, judge nothing before the appointed time until the Lord comes. He will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will reveal the purposes of the hearts then everyone will have a commendation from God. You know, sometimes we can sit or stand and look at what other believers do, other churches do, and we can sometimes say, well, boy, they're really doing a work for God. Or we can look at others and say, oh, man, they are absolutely blowing it or not accomplishing the will of God. Here's what I do know. It is not my responsibility to figure all of that out. Neither does yours. God will bring to light the hidden things. I want you to know God will be fair in his judgment and his dispensing or lack of there of dispensing of rewards. And we don't judge anything except ourselves. And the fact is, God will reveal the true purpose of every believer. You know, some treat church as a game, don't they? Some take church and living like a Christian as a weekend social gathering. We are one way at the church house, but we live another way at our own house. My friend, listen to me. We take our life lived under Christ seriously, Paul said, remember that we wait for his glorious appearing 
and until then, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Now, my friend, your reward and your loss is really up to you based on how you live your life. And I give you the verse of 2 Timothy 4 8. 2 Timothy 4 8, check this out and listen very carefully. From now on, or from now on, a crown of righteousness is laid up for me, Paul says, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day. On what day? The day we stand before him. But the rapture happens first. But we're talking about the great judgment seat of Christ. But Paul says, and not to me only. And not only to me, but to all those, to all all those who have loved his appearing. Yes, I can't wait for the Lord to redeem us completely and rapture us out of this sin-cursed world. However, we have a lot to do until then, and we must be living in a manner that that could happen at any moment. And if it happens, there are really three questions, isn't there? Am I ready for that? In other words, is my eternal state secured for me for eternal life? Or am I going to be given eternal death? So am I ready for Christ to appear? Do we know Christ as our Lord and Savior? That'd be the first question. The second question would be, am I living in a manner that pleases and honors the Lord. I'm living soberly, I'm living righteously, and I'm living godly in this present world. And thirdly, the question would be, if I'm looking for and awaiting his glorious appearing, am I thinking soberly and realizing that when that happens, that the age of grace ends and I'm going to be given rewards or lack thereof on how I've lived this Christian life? Have I been faithful to God and his word and spreading his gospel? That's a great question. Those are great thoughts and just some that I want to lay on your heart. But these really are solemn facts of all the verses that I've just read you, and I hope that they haven't overwhelmed you. But as we consider God and in, and in his grace, that he has left us here, the age in which we're living. People often ask, well, why doesn't God take us when we get saved? How do we, why do we have to still live here on this sin-cursed world? God has left you and I here and all believers the moment that we get saved. We aren't immediately raptured out or taken. It, it, we're left here because there's a work to do. There's a work and witness for us to do unto Christ. And that's why it matters. But the warning that Paul gave to us is be not high-minded in this process. It's easy to take for granted, right, that the rapture hasn't happened. We've heard about it. It's been preached. We've heard it over and over. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. And yet the timetable still is on Paul's and there's still a waiting period, and the longer we wait, sometimes we can get accustomed to or indifference that maybe it's not going to happen. And we start to lose sight of the true reality. So we start to live our own life the way that we want to live, even as believers doing our own thing without reflective calls and without sincerity of realizing how important these few years that we have here on earth matter. Are we maximizing the time that God has given us? As the Bible uses the analogy, redeeming the time. I don't know how much time anyone has. No man knoweth the hour, right? When Jesus comes, we don't know how long we're going to have. No man's promised tomorrow. We know all of those. We've heard those probably many times over. But is it really our heart check? Are we just kind of tuned out or are we allowing it to really give us a heart check today? Here's what I want to leave you with. Paul gave part of the conclusion 
of Romans 11, 18, 19, 20, 21, and 22, of the fault to us, be not high-minded, but fear. We want to enter into the presence of our Savior with the fault and with the heart of God. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Have I been good? And I don't mean good by my own standard. I mean, have I been living pre- in this present world godly and soberly and righteous? Have I been living good and have I been faithful? I'm, I'm, God is going to reward or I'm going to have loss based on those issues alone, not sin. This is not about a sin issue, okay? Once you are forgiven your sin, you're forgiven of your sin forever. It's eternal. Thank the Lord for that, and I won't stand in judgment for that. Neither will you, but am I living in a manner that I'm living really soberly and clearly in thought not to waste any more time? You know, time is a precious gift, isn't it? You only are given so much of it, and here's the thing. Once you spend it, you can never get it back. So let this and these verses kind of just get into the seat of your soul, your spirit, and your heart today, and allow this to really challenge you and charge you to reflect on how you and I and all believers are really living our life unto Christ. Well, I want to thank you for joining me today. We're going to pick back up on that thought, be ye not high-minded but fear. And we'll dive into that and spend more time dissecting that on Thursday. I hope that you'll join me, and I hope that you'll invite someone with you. Remember, you are loved and you are prayed for. And until then, God bless you, and we'll see you on Thursday.